Mr. Feroz Aziz, who joins us uh, on the broadcast on Budget Day. Feroz, always a pleasure chatting with you. Uh, great to have you here with us on uh, Budget Day. Uh, from what I understand, the markets are recovering post the budget speech. But uh, how do you view the taxation on investments uh, that we're just uh, talking about, uh, be it the increase in the LTCG or the doing away with of TDS on mutual funds? Yes, so I think I think uh, I'm I'm reasonably positive. See, I've I've been talking about capital gain simplification simplification for the last two years. Uh, I think simplification. The uh, the key point is all assets have been brought to twelve and a half percent, which is a big move uh, because it says financial and non-financial assets. All of them have been brought to twelve and a half percent in the long term. The only difference remains between the long term categorization after one year or two years. So the simplification need which capital gain had on both counts has been satisfied. One is on the tax rate for real estate, for gold, for equity. Uh, all of it is unlisted equity, private markets, all of it at 12.5%. The only difference is one year and two years uh, for non-financial assets. That's a very, very big change. And I think that's a huge simplification. <laughs> Second, earlier there were different time periods for them to become long term. Now all of them become long term in the same time period unlisted equity was two years and real estate was two years but there were some uh, debt instruments which were three years and gold was three years so uh, all of them become two year plus so i think simplification on tax rate and the period to get to long term is a big big move now what can happen is real estate can have a large impact because earlier real estate used to have a taxation of 20 percent plus plus so people used to use the benefit of Section 54 to reinvest into property. But if there is somebody having to pay only 12.5% tax, he may not reinvest the money back into property. So it is a double-edged sword or, or it could also be construed as positive or negative for real estate because real estate always had this engine of reinvestment because of Section 54, which was capped at 10 crores uh, a couple of budgets back. So I think it's a big, big move on the capital gain head. Uh, and I think I'm reasonably positive. Second, I think Section 50 AA, uh, which was included in February 2023, brought in to some degree of tax disadvantage for fund of funds uh, inadvertently. That has now been clarified. So if you look at the finance bill, it very clearly says uh, Section 50 AA now has been reversed in the language instead of 35% in equity, uh, which was the mandate to be out of this gamut. Now they've said if there is more than 65% in money market and debt instruments, it will be covered under Section 58. So that's a great news for the mutual fund industry where fund of funds inadvertently had got covered <coughs> into Section 50A and that has been corrected. So these are some major changes for the mutual fund industry and the investment arena. But I think the simplification need, which I've been highlighting for years, uh, has been uh, done to a 80-90% extent, which I would expect. All right, uh, Feroz, uh, talk to us, you know, post this budget, how do you view the sectors uh, to invest in? Where should, uh, you know, people realign their portfolios uh, going forward? Before going to the sectors, let me touch upon the broader market. I think the broader market rally could remain intact because there's no bad news there. Uh, that's very, very important because it's not just about the sectorial differential performance, the relative performance of the broader market, which is a small cap and the mid cap space with Nifty has been reasonably divergent, divergent, almost about a 35% difference between these indices you see in about a year and a quarter. So that was one risk we were sitting on. Uh, if there was something which could actually burst that bubble, uh, bubble is a strong word, bubble in the sense higher valuations or uh, more than two sigma, more than mean Piece, which you see in the mid cap and small cap space today that remains intact there's no uh, panic there point two i think the capital uh, uh, capital expenditure has kept been kept in intact so before and after the budget uh, i think whatever was the opinion after the interim budget remains the same now i would say the banking sector will get some push because debt uh, most of the debt instruments have been brought to parity with deposits so that could actually improve deposits uh, growth uh, that's point one. So the banking sector, which is the reasonable valuation, almost 27% of Nifty, I'm still bullish on. It's too conventional to be bullish on. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the uh, bead as it may. But that's one sector which is heavyweight on Nifty. And there is going to be a lot of influx from EPFO in Nifty. Uh, and Nifty's biggest beneficiary is financial services. And valuations remain intact. Deposit growth gets some push. So that's why financial services, of course, the usual suspects like defense, railways, roads, 
डेफिनेटली गेट द पुश बट आई डोंट थिंक दोज आर डीप इनफ सेक्टर्स फॉर सम फंड मैनेजर टू पुट मोर देन फाइव सेवन परसेंट ऑफ द ओवरऑल मनी इज मैनेजिंग फेरोज वॉज एर एनी थिंग दैट यू आर होपिंग फॉर दैट यू डिड नॉट गेट फ्रॉम दिस बजट yeah i think uh, i think i was expecting uh, a better net borrowing uh, i think i think uh, 14 lakhs and 11 lakhs i i was expecting some degree of surprise there uh, in terms of the net borrowing but they that has remained identical which is also a good news but yeah that's the only thing uh, which i was looking forward to a little better number in the in terms of the net borrowing so that the yields could actually soften uh, and gives headroom for rbi to reduce the re, uh, interest rates on the repo side from 6 and 1/2 downwards because we are almost at a flat yield curve currently uh, so that's the only thing which uh, disappointed me i think the second part which i think is very critical is of course the uh, the the uh, push on the equity uh, of course equity has had some detrimental taxation 12 and 1/2% is not too much of a difference if anybody would have looked at any change in the capital gain they would have at least said 15% so that way the market is not too disappointed but i think uh, uh, indian uh, households have funded the fiscal deficit of our country for long periods of time the foreigner has always uh, participated in the india growth story using equity and the domestic household savings have only 6% amount of money in equity there has to be some better incentive than just that 1 lakh moving to 1 lakh to for 25000 exemption because for the years now that the foreigners are actually putting money in indian bonds uh, you have a breather to move money of indian households to equity what strategically has been done uh, for the flight of capital otherwise india's return if i computed interpolated for the last 10 years indian households return on their 800 lakh crores is only 6.8% give or take for the last 10 years so as a country we have to see how does the household start making double digit returns or at least some real returns and for which they should have some structurally done something to have, uh, to encourage flight of capital uh, from from debt to equity रीडेवलपमेंट ऑफ अमरावती solid cash out of about 40000 crore rupees without too much tinkering except for the long term capital gains tax without too much tinkering on the tax front so is the fiscal deficit target of 5.9% uh, being being uh, you know a little too optimistic for the government and if i could just add to that sure. the fact that she also directly talked about next year going to 4.5% that's right so you know directionally as well sorry so feroz uh, too ambitious 4.9% and 4.5 I I yes it is definitely at the face of it very ambitious like you rightly mentioned Karthik bhai uh, but I personally think uh, the government has always underestimated revenues over the last few years you see the budget estimates are generally uh, beaten reasonably from a revenue standpoint one two uh, i think the dividend uh, but the disinvestment targets have not been met over the years okay if you look at uh, the disinvestment disinvestment targets were 60 65000 crores every year uh, but the actual turned out to be 35000 crores so i think the disinvestment especially given the kind of rally we have seen in uh, uh, psus i think disinvestment uh, i think government would definitely seriously <coughs> want to bring in disinvestment because there is hardly any free float in our equity markets you know the 500th company uh, in the chronological order of free float is 4000 crores in a country where there is 8 lakh crores of household financial savings so point i'm trying to make is this investment targets uh, can be better achieved and i think these 30 40000 crores can uh, can be very easily met at these elevated valuations of psus supplying these elevated valuations relatively but still relative to private sector psus are still undervalued uh, even on the banking and the non banking space so point i'm trying to make is 30 40000 crores i'm sure or is a buffer in the revenue estimate itself and the disinvestments could actually uh, help to get this 4.5 i think that's why uh, uh, the ambitious target uh, has been put in place uh, and but the numbers have not uh, been aggressive all right uh, mohit gang and uh, feroz aziz uh, thank you so much uh, for taking time out to be with us here 